Evergrande is making payments. Is it really a black swan event? Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee, we're going to have a look at this article from Reuters which is discussing Evergrande making some payments on some of their, their coupons. So, Evergrande to make domestic bond coupon payments soothing fears. So is this really you know, the Lehman Brothers of China? Is it going to well, collapse the market and flow through to Australia and the rest of the world? Or will it just be contained in China and not really make that much of an impact? Let's have a look at this. So they say they'll make a bond coupon payment on September the 23rd. Investors and analysts play down threat of the Lehman moment. Fed's Powell expected to be asked about Evergrande at a meeting. So China Evergrande Group's main unit said on Wednesday it would make a coupon payment on its domestic bonds on September 23, offering some relief to jittery markets that have been on the edge over fears that a default of China's number two developer could ripple through the global financial system. I wonder wonder how much of that payment is from loans from staff. You know, maybe, maybe. Henga Real Estate Group said in a statement it would make the coupon payment on its Shenzhen traded 5.8% September 2025 bond on time on September the 23rd. The announcement comes as Evergrande wants the country's top-selling developer inches closer to a key deadline for an interest payment on a dollar bond, with financial markets tense even as investors and analysts played down the threat of its troubles becoming the country's Lehman moment. Hangda Real Estate's coupon payments totals 232 million yuan, so it's 35.88 million, according to Refinitiv Data. So... We're not talking a significant amount compared to all their debts, but it's still one a part of their interest payments. They're making it. We are still trying to understand what this payment means for other bonds, but I imagine they would want to stabilize the market and make other co- coupon payments given the close scrutiny. Said a source familiar with the situation who declined to be identified as they're not authorized to speak to the media. U.S. stock futures, there you are, and the risk-sensitive Australian dollar rose, while safe haven assets such as the yen and U.S. treasuries slipped. So, well, let's uh, let's jump over here, jump over here and have a look at a few things. We can see we have the U.S. Uh, stock market index is sitting. In, let's jump to for, um, forex. This is on trading economics. The Aussie and USD seventy-two four four. So, yeah, okay, it's it's up. It's kind of flat be quite honest it's not moving much so evergrande is set to make its onshore bond payment on time but the developer has not indicated whether it will be able to pay 83.5 million in interest due on its march 2022 bond on thursday it has another 47.5 million payment due on the september 29th for march 2024 notes Both bonds would default if Evergrande fails to settle the interest within 30 days of the scheduled payment date. Trade in Evergrande's onshore exchange traded bonds has been halted since September 16, when Hengda Real Estate applied to suspend trading for a day. While trading technically resumed on September 17, it now only takes place through negotiated transactions in what traders say was an attempt to curb volatility. While concerns about the spillover from a messy collapse roiled markets on Monday, U.S. stocks were flat on Tuesday and Chinese shares fell in early trade after a two-day public holiday. But China's property index recovered losses and was up more than 3%, while banking stocks were down around 3%. Evergrande is so deeply interwined with China's broader economy, from retail investors to infrastructure-related firms, that a uh, that a, they are a gauge for global commodities demand, that fears over contagion have kept financial markets on tender hooks. There's been a fair bit of concern about the possibility of contagion, analysts at New York-based Bespoke wrote in a research note on Tuesday. But so far, that concern isn't showing up in parts of the credit markets that have served at, well as red flags for bought at credit crunches in the past. Evergrande missed interest payments due Monday, to at least two of its largest bank creditors, Bloomberg reported on Tuesday, citing people familiar with the matter. The missed payments had been expected 
As China's housing ministry had said, the company would be unable to pay on time, Bloomberg said. As investors and policymakers around the world try to assess the potential fallout, Securities and Exchange Commission Chair Gary Gensler said the U.S. market is in a better position to absorb a potential shock from a major company default than it was before the 2007-2009 financial crisis. Fed Chair Jerome Powell will likely be asked about the fallout from Evergrande when he speaks after the Fed's two-day meeting that wraps up on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Despite the looming defaults, some futures have been increasing their pos- some funds have been increasing their positions in recent months. Fund giant BlackRock and investment banks HSBC and UBS are among the largest buyers of Evergrande's debt. Morningstar data and a blog post showed. Other bondholders include UBS Asset Management and Amandi, Europe's largest asset manager. In any default scenario, Evergrande, teetering between a messy meltdown, a managed collapse, or the less likely prospect of a bailout by Beijing, will need to restructure the bonds, but analysts expect a low recovery ratio for investors. S&P Global Ratings said on Monday it believes the Chinese government would only act in the event of a far-reaching contagion posing systematic risks to the economy. I would characterize Evergrande as a telegraphed and controlled detonation, said Sammy Moody, the portfolio manager of the 5.1 billion T-Rail Price Emerging Markets Bond Fund, who does not have a position in the company. BNP Prambus estimated in a research note that less than 50 billion of Evergrande's 300 billion outstanding debt is financed by bank loans, suggesting the Chinese banking sector will have a sufficient buffer to absorb potential bad debts. Citigroup Inc. subsidiaries serve as trustee and payment agent for a China Evergrande bond that matures in March 2022, and that is $83.5 million in interest coming due on Thursday. We do not have any direct lending exposure to Evergrande. Our indirect exposure comes through counterparty credit risk, is small, and with no single significant concentration. Citigroup spokesperson Danielle Romero Aspalos said in an email on Tuesday. She declined to comment on Evergrande's scheduled payments. Evergrande's Hong Kong listed shares fell as much as 7% on Tuesday, having tumbled 10% the previous day on fears. It's $305 billion in debt could trigger widespread losses in China's financial system in the event of a collapse. The Hong Kong market was closed on Wednesday for a holiday. So there we have it, everyone. Evergrande are making some payments... So it's soothing fears in the market. Well, what's the the takeaway to this one? Should we be worried about this? Is is Evergrande the black swan event that's going to ripple through and affect the global economy? Now, it could have an impact in China, and that could, well, flow through to Australia. We're seeing it manifest in our dollar and in the iron ore prices as two primary examples. Now... Is it all just a bit of FOMO or FUD, really, coming through the markets? The media loves to play this stuff up. Every man and his dog is talking about this as being being a black swan event. We'll have to see, everyone. It looks like they're making their payments. If they're cobbling enough money together, if they're liquidating their assets, if they're doing what they can, if it's a controlled controlled collapse or shutting down of this organization or just a complete reorganization of it, it's not going to be as drastic as Lehman Brothers. It really doesn't feel like it. What do you think, everyone? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. Sign up for Self Wealth or Stake. Use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy our merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.